The use of the W5500 Ethernet shield for communication via an Ethernet cable on the ESP8266. With this Ethernet shield, we can connect it to the ESP8266 using the available 8 pins. This shield allows communication using Ethernet, either directly or through a switch port. I will use this ESP8266 as a Modbus TCP server that communicates via Ethernet for a more stable connectivity compared to Wi-Fi. Before we begin, please click the subscribe button below. Thank you. Let's get started. This is the wiring diagram between the W5500 Ethernet shield and ESP8266. Please follow this wiring. This is the library I'm using to utilize the ESP as a Modbus TCP server. Download the library files, and copy it into the Arduino IDE's libraries folder. Now, let's try a simple code example. In the Arduino IDE, go to File, Select Examples, find the added library ESP8266, then choose TCP Ethernet, and select Server. In this example code, replace the IP address with the address on your Ethernet network. For instance, I'm using 192.168.0.210 as an example. Since we connected the SCS pin on the W5500 to GPIO number 5, ensure that in the syntax Ethernet. In it, it is set to the number 5. Before uploading the code, ensure that the selected board is the ESP8266, and also select the connected port for the ESP8266. During the upload process, do not connect PO5 volts and ground to the pins on the Ethernet shield to avoid upload failures. After uploading the code, connect the pins on the W5500 to the ESP8266 as per the wiring diagram I provided earlier. Ensure the connections are accurate according to the picture. Then, plug the Ethernet cable into the port and the switch, and power up the ESP. The next step is to test the connection using the specified IP address in the code, which is 192.168.0.210. Open the command prompt and type a RP, a to check if the IP has been detected on the network. We can see the IP address has been successfully detected on the network. To ensure the connection, execute a ping command to the IP address. You should see the ESP's IP address connected to the network. Next, I've added a relay to the previous code. The relay serves as an ESP output, controlled based on the coil register values in Modbus. By adding coil registers 0 and 1, the relay status or output will correspond to the values present in these coils. To control the Modbus coils on ESP, I'm using Node-RED as a Modbus TCP client. I'll create a simple flow that functions to turn on and off each coil register present in the Modbus server. I'm using a switch node for the on and off control, connected to a Modbus write node that links to the Modbus TCP server.
In the Modbus write node, first, add the Modbus server according to the target of Modbus TCP server, such as the IP address, default port 502, and select the type as TCP. In the node configuration, select FC, function code, force single coil, and choose address 0 to control coil 0 or relay number 1. Copy those nodes, and configure them in the same way to control the coil at address 1, or relay number 2. Don't forget to click deploy. Then, access the node red dashboard. You'll notice two switch controls that will turn on and off each relay respectively. From the previous wiring, I've added a relay used as outputs, and they will illuminate based on the coil status. With the Ethernet shield, ESP acts as a Modbus TCP server using an Ethernet cable connected to the switch port. The node red dashboard serves as the control for the relay, accessible via my smartphone. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.